Geek TV presents Homework Hotline, the after-school show that fuses learning with fun. Watch local teachers bring the classroom on air and online. This is Homework Hotline. I'm Beth Baker and I teach math at McKinleyville Middle School. I'm Jody Hamengo. I teach seventh grade science at McKinleyville Middle School. Yeah, and welcome back. We started a few conversations on Tuesday. We're going to kind of wrap them up today and we're kind of mushing together all the math and science that we um, wanted to talk about. And we're talking a lot about scale factors this week. So that's kind of where we're going to take this message. We're going to start with a little public service announcement. So maybe Ms. Hamengo will talk to us about this. So Starting last night into today, we have the first big swell of the season. So the swell is 10 feet building to 18 feet by today. So just a reminder that beaches don't turn your back on the ocean. Um, waves of this size, especially with the summer beach pattern, have, an, have the opportunity to come really high up the beach. So never turn your back on the ocean. Um, stay far away from the ocean until the swell recedes. And north and northwest beaches are especially dangerous right now. And really watch it on the jetties. So yeah. it's tempting to go out and see the big dramatic ocean, but um, every year people get swept off. So um, just always be really smart and really respectful around the ocean. And we are starting just kind of that winter weather pattern where there can be some really big waves coming up. And so. never go in after your dog. Your dog is liable mm -hmm. to survive. They can tolerate colder temperatures than they us for better. a longer period of time, and they oftentimes make it out on their own. Yep, so avoid family tragedies. Be smart around the big ocean swells. So that's just our uh, public service announcement for the day. <laughs> and now we're gonna get on to actually the, um, uh, the math and science that we're gonna talk about. And I wanna talk a little bit about scale factors. So right now in seventh grade, some seventh graders are learning how to draw maps and the map has a scale on it of like, you know, how much is a mile or whatever. And then um, we're studying the Holocaust and we're talking about the scale of the disaster. So the English language arts talk teacher is talking about her form of scale. And then in science, we talk about scale. And of course in math, we love to talk about scale factors and how they're proportional to other things. So um, scale is popping up a lot. And if you're a seventh grader, you probably have scale coming at you from like all, at least four different subject areas right now. So that's kind of our unifying theme for the day. Right, and in science we're talking about how microscopic organisms, even though we can't see them, actually have a variety of sizes and shapes based on their function. Mm -hmm. So structure and function are married together, so structure helps an organism perform its function. So we're looking at the scale of things that we can't see. Okay, so, oh, that's, and that carries over the microorganisms from Tuesday. Right. All right, so where are we going to start? Okay, well, okay. we were actually going to start, as a little reminder, the ABCs of scientific illustration. So what we're going for in scientific illustration is accuracy. So draw what you see, not what is in your imagination. Your drawings should be big, so they should fill the page with room for labels, though. Um, and they should be colorful. So use color to, that makes your um, drawings more descriptive um, and they should clothe, the color should closely match your actual observations. Be detailed. So add words and small details to distinguish your object from those like it. And then explain, E. So add labels and measurements to record specific details about your object. So we're also working on scientists use observation as an important part of the scientific process. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I thought you were going to talk about, um, at some point today we might circle around back to the coloring because there's some really cool options of how to get color into a scientific drawing too. Right. So we'll talk about that in a little while also. Yeah. All right. So we were thinking we could scale something down in size. So not only do we use scale factor to scale objects up, we can use um, scale factors to scale things down. So what better to scale down than the world's largest animal? So, so we're going to make a blue whale fit on a sheet of paper today, and that will for sure take some sort of a scale factor. <laughs> Definitely. So just a little bit about blue whales. We don't know that much about them. So if you have read about them, you probably know all this already. This is common knowledge. Um, so they are endangered, but their numbers are increasing. They can eat four to six tons of krill every day. 
Wow. So, a ton is 2,000 pounds. Right. So we're yeah. talking like 12,000 pounds of um, krill a day. Um, it's one of the loudest animals on earth. They, their booming voices are 188 decibels, so louder than a jet engine. Wow. And scientists believe that they can be heard like a thousand miles across the ocean. We also know that from their earwax, actually, their earwax <laughs> layers up and that helps us estimate their age. So we believe that they live to be between 80 and 90 years old and that the oldest, based on the earwax, is 110. So, and that's like obviously a dead whale. We're not like out taking earwax samples. <laughs> um, and they can weigh up to 200 tons. So math wow. teacher. So you go 2,000 times 200, so that gives you five zeros, so a four followed by five zeros. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot. I don't mm -hmm. even, I can't yeah. even imagine that. Yeah. And the babies are born at about three tons. Wow, so 6,000 pounds for the baby, for a little baby, for the runt. Yeah, wow. and the babies are about seven meters long, and they gain, can gain like 200 pounds a day. So I think the baby is born roughly the size of a car. So if you talk about like length and weight, if you think about a baby whale the moment it's born, being roughly car sized, rough, just in general, that kind of gives you something to connect it to. Right, and a, an adult blue whale, um, their heart is about the size of a car. Wow. And their tongue weighs as much as an elephant. Goodness gracious. Okay, yeah. these are truly humongous animals. It's Do truly. they live in the Pacific Ocean? They're in all the oceans of the oh. world except the Arctic. Mm -hmm. um, there's even some in the Antarctic, and there's uh, several subspecies depending on where you are. Ah. Um, so the adults and the females, interestingly enough, are larger than the males in general. Mm -hmm. And so the largest females can be 110 feet long. Wow, so it's about 30 meters ish. Yeah. Yeah. And you can imagine, they have very few predators. Mm, yes, I bet. At that size. There's, yeah. um, although they can be attacked, especially the babies, by sharks and um, uh -huh. orcas. And they often die by boat strike. Oh, so they get up, chopped up by the propeller? Yeah, uh -huh. or hit hard enough. Um, mm -hmm. They can get um, trapped oh, in the a lovely, fishing line. There's a lovely graphic on the screen for very you guys. Lovely. You can take a look. So there's 32 meters is the biggest whale up on the diagram. Um, and there's our little humpback in between, which we can occasionally see here. Uh-huh. And um, is that, that's a great white. Very underneath. nice. Yeah. yeah, and then you can see the elephant. Yeah. All right, so that's a very nice graphic just to kind of give us some. And if you're interested, there's a lot online like that. You can see it compared to the human. National Geographic Online has a very nice tool where you can drag things to compare the weight and size of a blue whale to very cool. Other huge objects. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so are we going to try and scale down a whale? Yeah, let's try to scale All one down. Right. So here's um, an image that you, it's really easy to see what they look like, mm -hmm. obviously done by an artist. So if they're approximately 30 meters, so that's about 100 feet. Mm -hmm. And we're going to um, enjoy the fact that this ruler is 30 centimeters long. Right. So if we just go, if we just convert every meter to a centimeter, then I think we can fit the, so if we went from 300 to 30, we can just scale it down. Here, should we do the math first? Let's do the math. Okay, let's see, how do I get a page? You know how to do this. Thank you. Oh, oh and there's all of our math yet. from last time. Oh my goodness, and then we can, um, let's see. I selected the eraser Erase. for you. Okay, and I want, oh, I gotta hold down my finger. We, um, every week we have to remember how to do this. <laughs> Clear the sheet. And right yes. now, if you're at there home and you're a student or a teacher, you're doing lots of distance learning, which means that you're doing a lot of technology troubleshooting. So you probably understand. Yes, I'm sure you do. All right, that's done. Okay, so here we go. So we wanna take something that's 300, oh, I like this a lot better, meters. Um, th 30 meters. Oh, 30 meters, 300 feet. Oh my gosh, okay, I gotta find my eraser It'd again. It'd be Put cool up with if me they feet. were 300 feet. You know what, feet. let's just go like this and start again, shall we? Yeah, it's How scratch paper. 30 meters. Scratch smart board. Yes. And we wanna change this into 30 centimeters. So in fact, this won't be too bad. So 30 meters, 
times 100, I don't even think we really need the dimensional. There's 100 centimeters in a meter. So we're just going to um, use the zeros as placeholders. So this is 3,000 centimeters, like that. So 3,000 centimeters, and we're going to take it to 30 centimeters. OK. And so we're going to ask, what would you divide by to get from 3,000 to 30? So we divide by 100. So our whale is going to be 1 one hundredth of the size of a real whale. Which okay. isn't quite as impressive. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you think about 100 of anything, like my driveway is 100 feet long. It's pretty darn long. Like I don't, you know, like my mailbox is, it looks little from the house. Like 100 feet is pretty, that's pretty long. And how long is a school bus? About 40 feet? Yeah, I think so. So two and a half school buses? Yeah, or almost three full school buses. Yeah. So, yeah. and if you imagine that incredible length, the girth that an animal of that length would have is like way substantial. big around. Yes. So I was reading about scientific illustrations to brush up on my skills, um, and they were saying, yeah, like draw a posture line so you can kind of. Although Miss Baker did an amazing job with the eyelash mite of <laughs> Tuesday. So I'm not yeah. sure she needs my advice. Oh, no, please, any advice you have. I can start a new page, too. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be the length of our whale. She's already measured that out. So on the paper. Yeah. Um, and they're long and skinny, so they're streamlined. They're swimming great distances. Mm -hmm. um, and they can swim up to 20 miles per hour if they're alarmed. Usually they cruise around the oceans at about 5 miles per hour. Okay, here I go. I'm going to just try and freehand it. Just, oh, oh, they took my picture down. Okay, people, that makes it a lot harder. <laughs> okay. It's behind you if you care to oh, turn. Good. I'm going to, I think I'm going to have to have two goes. Okay. There Let's it see is. Here. Okay. Back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I understand what the problem is in the studio. All right, and then it comes away up, and then his tail does kind of that. And let's see, then we got his. Uh, is this thing a flipper? What is that thing called? Fluke. A fluke. And then his fluke. mouth is like way up high. See, she's. And then doing there's great. like a T. I don't know where his eye is. Is it at the end of his mouth? Yes. So it's like down here somewhere. Kind of ish. Yeah, ish. Okay. And then um, with, I thought we should the talk pleats. about. Yeah, pleats right here because this all blows up kind of like a frog goes. Right. And then I did not really leave myself enough room for a, a good tail, but I'll just I try know. and kind and of. And their tails are awesome. And I'll squish it in here. That's this could be a male whale. <laughs> yeah, which he's is a little bit smaller. smaller. Yes, okay. So he's, this one is 30 centimeters. Okay, and that would go for, uh, let's see. So there's three, wait, I lost my zeros. How many zeros did I have? You had 3,000. Let's see, he was, I'll just do. So he was 30 meters. Mm -hmm. okay. Times 100. Times 100. Centimeters in one meter. Yep, so that's three with three zeros. One, two, three. So that's 3,000 centimeters. And then this guy's 30 centimeters. Okay, got it. Uh -huh. So this is um, 100 times smaller than the real guy. I right. just forgot what I was doing. Okay, and then, um, so this is 3,000 centimeters in real life. Like that. Okay. Right. And so in um, their skin under the water looks very, very blue. If we were to see one washed up on the beach, which does happen, um, several years ago one washed up in Mendocino. So if you ever get the opportunity to see a whale that washes up, it go early because they get very stinky. But it's also pretty neat to see them in real life. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing you could do with a drawing like this is this is a beautiful Here, opportunity so you okay. to, you could color this. That was one of the, that was the C of the ABCs of scientific illustration. So you could color it with colored pencils. Um, it would look amazing in watercolor um, to add some realistic color to your drawing. And especially probably some of you are a little bit more into art than you were before quarantine because we're all having to find ways to um, stay interested and engaged while we're at home. And watercolor is really cool, and I bet there's amazing YouTube videos on how to get started and how to control the paint. So it's a nice, inexpensive way to start with like a really incredible art project. Um, at some point, also, we might just mention that there's a really famous uh, bird illustrator named Audubon, and that when you talk about like really beautiful scientific illustrations with beautiful, authentic colors, is he's kind of like the most famous. I don't know his first name. Is it John? 
Um, I don't I'm know. not sure. John anyway. is an outstanding guess. Um. <laughs> I think I know that, but I don't want to pretend to know more than I do. But anyway, Audubon drawings of birds are kind of one of the most famous examples of really beautiful scientific drawings. So if you love science and you love art, um, it's a beautiful way to marry the two mm -hmm. um, to become a scientific illustrator, which is an actual career. Yes, absolutely. Um, we do have some activities about scaling, and now that we've gone really big to little, I think now we're going to talk about little to big. Is that what we're going to do right. next? Right. Okay. So, and you can, if we have time, you could pick your, um, pick what you want to draw next. Mm. So yes. we're going to look at something called a Jamboard. And again, if you are um, doing distance learning from home or virtual learning, or your, this is a tool that you might see in your classrooms. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Miss Baker. We have a variety of um, microscope images here, and we're going to have Miss Baker try know. to put them in order from the yeah. smallest to the largest. All right. So um, I'm going to I'm going to guess what they are, and okay. I think this bug is pretty big, so I'm going to put the bug like down okay, here. Okay, that's a fruit fly. A fruit famous fly. in labs it's around a the world. Beautiful picture, and then I know the eyelash mite's pretty big. Okay. And then, it, can you tell me, is that thing a grain of rice? That is a grain of rice. Okay, under so the that microscope. thing's really big. So I'm going to put that over here. Oh, I'm going to make that biggest. Okay. And then that final picture that she's moving right now, or just a second oh, ago, yeah. that is um, an electron micrograph of our hair. So our hair without a microscope appears relatively smooth, but it actually has a scaly surface. Got it. Um, I, is this like onion or a vegetable you cell? You know what? That is a cardiac um, heart muscle. Oh, wow. Cell. Okay, and I thought that might be a, it looks like it's swimming. It's like, so I thought it might be kind of big because it looks like it's swimming around. I yeah, have no idea. That is a diatom. Or okay. an, um, a phytoplankton, anyway. A phytoplankton, okay. And then. What's this beautiful thing? Another phytoplankton. Okay, I'm gonna go phytoplankton, phytoplankton as my littlest. Uh, this thing. Another phytoplankton. Okay, I'm gonna put those, and then I'm gonna go here. And then, let's see, I'm gonna put this kind of in the middle, if it'll let me <laughs> grab it. Okay, so I'm gonna try this, th whatever this is first. Phytoplankton. What's, this thing is a phytoplankton. Okay. And then this thing is another phytoplankton. Mm -hmm. It's very beautiful. This one, another phytoplankton? Yes. Okay. Good. So phytoplankton are photosynthetic, photosynthetic um, algae. So they live in the sunlit layers of water. Uh huh. Um, and they're a really important part of the ocean food chain. Okay. Even though they're okay. small uh -huh. and we can't see them because they're microscopic. Right. They're actually very important. So are they kind Earth. of the bottom of the food pyramid? They and are. Everything eats yeah, from and there? all the food mm -hmm. webs. So you okay, would good. come back all right. to them. Oh, and you know what? I changed my mind. I'm going to, if it was a whole fruit fly, not just his head, I'm going to go grain of rice. We'll pretend it's a whole fruit fly. <laughs> okay. Then, wait, then what's smaller, a grain of rice or a fruit fly? I'm going to put the grain of rice over here. Um, okay, if it there. helps you, the fruit fly could almost fit through the um, eye of a needle. Oh, definitely. And there's no way I'm going to push a grain of rice through the eye of a needle. Not unless <laughs> it's cooked. Or a really big needle. <laughs> okay. Maybe so an embroidery needle. This is my best guess. Okay. So now we have um, more information on page two, do we not? We do. So now. So jam boards, if you look at the top, mm -hmm. we can scroll to another page. By the way, if you like this idea, if you have a Google Doc and underneath you see um, you see what uh, Doc and what else is over there, um, you can do a form or you can do whatever. If you go to your Google res um, menu, at the very bottom of the Google menu, you'll see Jamboard. It's part of your Google suite. Right. You don't even add it as an app. It's already in there. So another way to All easily right. get there is on the top right, there's nine tiles on your Google suite, and that gets you to all your apps. And you can see yes. the little icon is kind of like a yellow circle with some mm -hmm. orange stuff on it. So it's pretty simple. It's basically a whiteboard, but it's kind of fun. So now we have sticky notes, and we can make the sticky notes bigger, I think. It'll let me grab it. <laughs> yeah, you just have to drag the corner. There we go. So we can read them. And now we can see how I did. Oh, I'm torturing the board a little bit here. There we go. There we are. Okay, so let's take a look here. And uh, let's see. So, do, do you, are you ready for help? Yes. I mean, you're doing okay. good. Okay. 
But just to give you a hint, this is the very smallest thing here. Okay. So this would be, I think you had that third. So and that's really a half close. of a micron. Yeah, there's okay. a little key there. Uh huh. So then you need to decide what's the next biggest. Okay, and we didn't talk about microns very much. A micron is one one millionth of a meter. Um, and so it's uh, a very, very tiny unit of measure that we use. Okay, and it's also called a micrometer, but usually I think micron is a little easier to talk about. Okay, so that's what this funny little uh, Greek letter mu and m is. This little letter means a million. All right, so let's see here. Um, is it two is the next yeah. one? Yeah. Okay, so these, I don't think I can grab two things at once. I'll just do them separately. Okay, and then maybe this, and that's 30 right. to 75. Okay, good, and then 100, so now it's this one. Right. Oh, I'm not too upset. So up. that's our heart cell. You were really close. Okay, I'm not too upset with myself. And now how do we do on what, what we're going to call the big things, even though they're not actually at all big, but they're <laughs> less tiny things. All right, uh, let's see. I got 300. Oh, and so, then these are in millimeters. Right. Oh, so Except the, for oh, the, the hair. hair goes next. So the hair is actually the width of a hair. Um, and obviously human hair can vary in width. Um, and it's actually, our hair is more narrow than a heart muscle cell is long. Oh, so a heart muscle cell would stretch across a hair? Um, a little bit past, if okay. you're, unless you have very thick hair. Got it. Okay, and I'm going to finish moving. Ugh. I just have to go a little bit slower. So, and what was surprising to me when thinking about this was that an eyelash mite is actually longer than our hair is wide. Back to the eyelash mites again. So if you guys <laughs> didn't get creeped out enough on Tuesday, we're doing it again on Thursday. We're going to double down on the creep factor. <laughs> All right, and then uh, let's see here. And then we've got this guy. I think I still have a little bit more rearranging to do. I love this photo of the fruit fly. It's really beautiful. Oh, and then the rice is a little bigger. Okay. Oh, you know what? I don't hate my results. Of course, I had some really expert hints here, too. Uh, let's see. So then we got this guy. All right. So for some reason, I have this hand ready to go, <laughs> even though this hand is like, this hand's helping. You should try them. Okay. Try them both. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can go left-handed. <laughs> I'm pretty right-handed. Okay. There we go. So now they're in order from really, really small to just kind of small. And you might notice on our notes that right here we went from micrometers and we jumped to millimeters. So we did go up one, um, one particular unit of measure. So in any case, that does give us everything. Thank you for putting together such a nice puzzle for us today. You are so welcome. That was very cool. And then... Um, okay, is there any of those you want to scale up in particular? Oh. You were really keen on this I guy. I love that one, but I don't feel like I can draw that. I mean, as you... Have, as I've proved over and over again this week, I can't actually draw. I but think you've actually proven the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if we want to scale one of these up, I want to try the fruit fly because it's so okay, beautiful. Okay, you were enamored with the fruit I, fly. Yes, absolutely. So, so three millimeters. And we can, say, if their total body length is three millimeters, let's just say their head is one millimeter. Oh, that seems fair. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's probably not exactly accurate, but yeah. And maybe this time, let's see here. That's maybe if we just went for two sheets of paper. How do we like that? I love that? that she's doing all the hard work, and I'm just standing here and pointing at things. <laughs> <laughs> I like to bail in. All right, so I'm going to go 30. And tell me again what this was called. You said it was a center line or something when you're starting a drawing? Um, well, if you're drawing an animal, sometimes like it could be called a posture line. So you can get kind of the arc of their body. Oh, I see. So maybe I'll just mark from here to here. So I want to go from 3 millimeters, which is 0.3 centimeters. That's a good way to do it. Right. And then let's see if I move my decimal again, point. 003 meters, is that right? Whoops. That is right. Meters, okay. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change him up to 30 centimeters. So I'm going to go from 3 millimeters up. So then if I want to get 30, I can get my scale factor right here by going 1, 2, 3, 4. Four jumps. So that would be um, a thousand times bigger. Did you I jump the M? Enough. 
I think you jumped I the M. Oh, we don't want to jump the M. No. No. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. So now I'm going to um, think about what it looks like. And mostly what I was interested in is those great big eyeballs. They have pretty magnificent eyeballs, mm -hmm. which can come in different colors, by the way. And then they have, I can't draw it, but they have like all these little panels, huh? Like, uh, it looks like tiny little bricks all together. Right. And then it's got its curly little so mouth parts. So they have compound eyes. Okay. Compound eyes. And then does it have mouth parts? They do. Mm -hmm. So they have sucking and absorbing mouth parts. Like this. And we could even kind like of? dive into the size of their okay, mouth parts, good. And then of is course. it head, thorax, and abdomen? Here's like a wing. Uh-oh, now I'm in real trouble. Here's the other. Notice I'm only drawing half because I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, no, it's way too small. Gosh dang it. Okay, this drawing did not turn out as well. I think going on to two okay. papers was a very bold move. I, well, I was trying to make him <laughs> that big, and I totally missed. And then here's his other eye. He kind of looks like a butterfly, actually. And then here's his. Oh, there's, there we there have we a go. picture. <laughs> okay, there's a much better picture on screen right now. I completely missed. Oh, his poor little head. I forgot, like, the rest of his head. All right, I'm going to throw my paper away and go again. Okay. And if you're lucky, at some point, you'll have a chance to study these in a lab. Yes. Oh, and then talk about why fruit flies are so important for science, because we hear about them a lot. They're a simple animal. You can obviously raise a whole bunch of them in a very small space. Um, and they have, they, they're oftentimes used in genetics experiments. So and even in a seventh grade classroom, you could raise and breed fruit flies to study their genetics. And then is it that they um, have particularly large DNA or something that they're easy to study? I know I've heard that before. Geez, that you're making me go way back into college. <laughs> <laughs> I don't quite remember. I remember head, thorax, and abdomen. You know what? That's I all I got. <laughs> that's pretty good. I feel like they have um, a small number of chromosomes. Oh, is that it? There's yeah. something that makes them particularly good to study. And I think, I think wings hook to the thorax. It's partly because they're inexpensive to raise. Oh. And, and you can have a lot in a small area. Yeah. Okay. There's the eye. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> this drawing, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> this is an amazing, amazing cartoon fruit fly. It could have its own show. That's coming next time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we, we will discuss. I will work on my drawing skills in the meantime. And our scaling up skills. I should have done my math a little bit more carefully on that one. But uh, anyway, so he is many times larger, and I'm just going to have to like fake it because I don't know what the heck, how many times larger he is. I lost track of my math somewhere in there. But uh, in any case, um, there's amazing math about why you can't have spiders and bugs and stuff that are huge. There's something called the cube square laws, and they would uh, collapse under their own weight. Right. Which is why, like, elephants have such thick legs. They're not shaped like a, you know, a poodle or something like that. Um, thank you so much for being with us the last two days. We've really loved it. And be sure and tune in next week with Amy and Pam for more math and science. Thank you. Bye.